Hello everyone. In this first video on C programming, we are going to cover some basic topics like understanding the structure of a C program. Then we look into the rules that we should follow while writing a C program. Then we'll understand the process of what happens between writing and executing the code. And finally, we'll end this lecture by writing and executing our first C program. So what will your C program look like? So although we have not started with the programming part as such, but we need to know what all things can be included and what will be placed at what part of the program, right? So let's start. The very first thing that you will include in your C program will be header file. If you have seen any C program, you will always see that it begins with something like this hash include stdio.h or there might be hash include math.h something like this hash include some name dot h. So these are called header files. Now what they include, they include the declaration or prototypes of some in some of the built in functions that you are going to use in your program. So let's understand this with an example. So one of the functions, inbuilt functions that you will most probably use in your program is printf. So printf is used to display something on the screen or on the terminal. Now how the printf function works, you are not going to explain that in your program. So that has already been explained in some other file, right? There's a concept in C that before using a function, you need to tell the system that it will encounter a function somewhere in the program, which is called function prototype. So generally when you will be writing your program, you will always include the prototype in the very beginning. But since this is a predefined function, built in function, so the prototype of these functions like printf, scanf or many other functions is defined in the header files. So for printf, its prototype is contained in stdio.h. That's why I need to include this header file. So you will learn in the course of the program that for what kind of functions, which header file is required. All right. So the very first part will always be the header file. The second thing that you need to include, now header files are compulsory. Okay. So remember, you can't omit header files. Second thing is global declarations. So global declarations can contain two things, global variables and function prototypes. Function prototypes for the user defined functions. And global variable, a variable which can be used anywhere in the program or it can be used in multiple functions. Okay, so like in this case, in this sample program, there's a function main, int main, and there's a user defined function also at the bottom. So if I can use a variable in both of them, if I want to use, then that variable has to be global. And how I will make it global? By declaring it before the int main, I mean after the header files, all right? So in this case, this int gv is a global variable. Next is function prototypes. So just, I have told you that prototype will tell the system that it is going to encounter a function. Prototype will also include what kind of a function it is. What is the data type? What is the return type? And what kind of arguments it takes? So as of now, it won't make much sense, but just to understand function prototype is something which is going to tell the system that the system is going to encounter a function at a later stage. All right. So this is an example of function prototype. So both these things are optional. If you will be using global variables, you have, then you can declare them. If you have created a function, then you can give the function prototype at this point of the program. Next come main, the main function. Again, this is compulsory. Every program will contain a main function. So this is the starting point of the program. Your execution will start from the first line in the int main function. Okay, so you can't skip it. 
So as it is clear from the name main, main is important, right? So this is the most important part of your program. It will contain your entire logic part. So the main function will have local variables. Like in this case, there's a local variable int lv5. So after the local variables, there will be programming logic, all the executable part. So whatever is the reason for writing your program, that forms the programming logic. So programming logic will be there always. Okay. Otherwise, if there is no logic, there's no point of writing the program. And most of the time you will have local variables also. Hardly they will be a program, very basic ones wherein you might not use variable, you will simply use printf. Okay. But otherwise, you will always use local variables. Then comes user defined functions. So sometimes the problem that you are working upon is complex and you might want to break into simpler problems and to solve every simple problem, you might want to create a new function so that the development logic development is easy, error handling is easy. So in that case, you may declare or you may define user defined functions. So then your main function can contain user defined functions also like in this case this is a call to a user defined function the function name here is example function okay so once these lines are executed the execution will be transferred to this particular function which is defined after the main function so the main function will be followed by user defined functions the function call is inside the main function, but the function itself is defined. So these are two different terms. Okay, so you see, this is a call and this is a definition part. So the function is defined outside the main function. Okay, the function can have its own local variables, like in this case, float pi is a local variable, and the function can have its own local logic. All right. Finally, the program can have comments. Comments are not part of your program as such. They are there to explain why you have used any particular statement or functions or what how the logic works. So they are for future reference either for yourself or for someone else who might be working on that particular software at a later stage. So for example, Windows has been built from so long, okay? The core logic still remains the same, but the people over the years would have changed who works at Windows, right? So the entire logic or the entire program might be of millions of lines of code. So how a newcomer will understand what that millions of lines mean? So they need some kind of comments with which he can understand what kind of logic have been used or built in the program, right? So this is a comment this is a comment right so wherever i have used double slash that's a comment so this is an overview of the structure of a program what all the suit program can contain the next thing to understand is the rules that you should follow while writing a c program so every program must have a main function which we have just discussed all the statements will be terminated with a semicolon except the header files all right so if i go back to this example so you can see all the statements they end with semicolon all except for the header part header file this one doesn't require a semicolon or even the curly braces whenever i close the curly braces they don't require the semicolon okay otherwise a generic statement it will require or it will end with the semicolon semicolon tells that the statement has ended next opening and closing braces should be balanced so whenever you open a bracket you must close it also statements should be written in lower case so you will see that all the statements are written in lower case the exception is symbolic constants which are written in uppercase so we'll see this in the future what are symbolic constants and how we write them last point you can you are free to use blank spaces 
as you want to improve the readability of your code. Last part is executing the code. So once you have written the code in an editor, there are two more steps. One is compiling the program and second is running the program. So although I have discussed these in a separate video, in the earlier video that I have shared, but I'll give you an overview here again, once again. So compiling is the process wherein four things will happen. Pre-processing in which the header file statement will be replaced by the code of the header file. So we have included hash include stdio.h, but that will be replaced with the exact lines that are there in the stdio.h file plus the comments will be removed. After the pre-processing stage, the compiler comes into play and it checks for any kind of syntax error. This compiler converts the code into a assembly language code, which is given to the assembler, which converts into an object code. So in the third phase assembly, the output of the compiler, which is a assembly language code is converted into an object code. Then in the fourth part, the linker links different object files to produce one executable file. The last part is running the program. So once you run the program, two things happen. Your executable file is loaded into the RAM by the loader. And then the execution starts once the OS assigns the CPU to the program. Okay, so this is these are the three steps that happens from writing till executing the program. So here is the first program sample program that we are going to execute. So you can use any editor that you want. I will be using Dave C++. The steps of installing Dave C++ I have discussed in a different video. I'll provide the link in the description part. So click on new file, source file, let's start, hash include stdio.h. I'm going to include the very basic things that are required. Then the main function. And then I'll simply print using printf. Hello to C programming. Okay. Close it with semicolon. Save. Let's give it a name. Hello. Dot C. Okay, so there's already a file existing with this name. Okay, do remember that you need to change this type to C program. Okay, it has to be C because all the C programs must have .c extension. So I'm going to replace this existing hello file, doesn't matter. All right, and then we will run it. Go to execute and run. So this file is not compiled by now. Okay, yes. All right, so there are no errors. And we get the output hello to C programming. So this is your first C program. I hope you are able to run this without errors. In the next video, we are going to discuss the character set, delimiters, tokens, a few other basic things that you need to begin with the actual coding part. So see you in the next video. Thank you.